good evening, everyone. Let's see. Good evening. Oh, and then there were five. Zero to five. <laughs> Hi, Kim. How are you? Hi, Lisa. How are you doing? Deanne. Hello. Hey, Jane. Hey, Mark. Are you sitting in the same room or are you in different rooms? <laughs> evening, Sue. Evening, Claire. Oh, thank you, Claire. Hi, Rachel. How are we all doing tonight? Hi, Caroline. Hey, Nick. Oh, lots of you coming on already. Ah, no pressure. <laughs> hey, Chris. Hey, Jenny. Oh, everyone's different rooms. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> 15 of you on already. Hey Shabs. Shabs, how's that ankle coming on? I see you went back to the gym. Hope it was all good. Hey Sam. Good evening. Good evening. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Let me just see. 16. So this is the eve of the you versus you January challenge. So I thought I'd have a quick discussion about goals. And actually, I'm not gonna waffle. I'm gonna let you guys comment and we're gonna uh, go with all those. Hey Claire, how are you doing? So Sam's just cooking her dinner, lovely stuff. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm on the healthy eating bandwagon, of course. I'm gonna do myself non-chicken um, fajitas tonight. So I'm going to have um, uh, fajitas, but no wraps. I'm going to put them in a big romaine lettuce leaf, which is how I like to eat it. Ah, uh, Nick, self-isolation. I know, I feel your pain so much. <laughs> feel your pain. <laughs> it's my first couple of days of freedom this weekend, so I've taken advantage and Thankfully, the weather was amazing yesterday, so I just literally got my bike out and went out for a deep, long ride. Hey, Belinda. Hey, Louise. Hey, Karen. I haven't seen you for ages, Karen. How are you? Hope you're well. <laughs> How many days have you got to go, Nick? I think I tested positive right till day 10, which was a bit of a bummer. Um, hey, Michelle. Nice to see you this morning. <laughs> So, have we all read the email? Give me a thumbs up if you have. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> the big thumbs up if you read the email um, that Jane sent out to your inboxes after she done her live on Wednesday, um, telling you all about it. Yeah, lots of hearts. Give me the hearts. <laughs> I like a lot of interaction. <laughs> So I hope you've all had a chance to have a look and read all the uh, material that was in there. Hey Lorraine, uh, Sue's on day seven, still positive. Yeah, it's so annoying, isn't it, Sue? Um, Sam Gill, I had a raging hangover yesterday, still feeling crap. But no alcohol, no sugar, healthy food only. Yes, that's it. You're allowed to finish up all your stuff. It is Christmas once a year after all. But now's the time to refocus and reset. So hopefully you've all had a chance to have a look at the, uh, the material in the email. So um, I had a lot of documents that, go, that went out with that. We had um, a copy of the habit tracker. We had a copy of a blank habit tracker so you can make your own goals. Hey Lorraine. Yes, I am. I actually wasn't ill with COVID. I just had to stay indoors, which was equally as frustrating. <laughs> but I'm thankful that I was not ill. So I thought I'd just go through um, some goals, what goal setting means. Um, um, Jane went through it on Wednesday, but I just thought I'd reiterate that. And then maybe we can have a bit of a, a comment discussion on people's goals and what they're gonna be doing. 
and James has put the link up in the comments there as well. So we have our so first of all thumbs up if you're joining the challenge or give me a uh, give me another sign that you're sitting on the fence maybe you don't know whether to do it or not um, so Nick said it's 10 days will be Friday and this you get negative on Monday and Tuesday I feel okay apart from not being able to smell or taste oh oh so oh lots of lots of thumbs yes Nick, I'm sure you'll be, I'm sure you'll be just fine. Hopefully, um, smell or taste, and that that's that's good for, I guess, <laughs> eating less nice food. <laughs> Evening, Claire. How are you? So lots of you it looks like we're going to be joining the Jan Challenge, which is fabulous stuff. So um, Jane sent out some worksheets. So we've asked you to have a think about um, the goals that you're going to be setting yourself. Um, and we wanted you to make these kind of identity based goals. So um, that should give you a sense of empowerment. Um, we've asked you to write in the present tense what you or who you will be in one year's time. Hey, Wendy. Um, so I don't know if any of you want to share anything that you've written. Um, maybe you've just got a couple. Uh, maybe you've just got one thing that you want to focus on. Um, but it'd be good if you could share so I mean a lot of people might not be um, might still be sort of stuck about what they what they really think they want to achieve um, so hopefully by sharing some kind of information tonight then um, we can help hey Nick how you doing so I thought I'd go through um, some of the goals that I've written uh, identity based goals that I've written um, I'm not I don't have too many goals this year. Um, I smashed my 10K steps last year. Yes, I'm so happy about that. Um, so I'm gonna keep going with that. Hey Jenny, how are you? Um, so for me next year, so in one year's time, I am gonna be a qualified level three yoga instructor. So that's one way I'm identifying with myself for next year. That's something I really wanna do. It's something that I've really wanted to do for ages. Um, but obviously when I was working in the city and also working with you lovely ladies here at AdFab, I didn't really have the time to spend studying it. Um, hi Caroline, how are you? Uh, so that is my goal for this year. Actually, I've put a time on that. I'll go through that in a second, but I've put a time on that. Um, so by March, I want to be a qualified level three yoga instructor. So hopefully that'll help you guys out as well. Um, I will also have increased my muscle mass by 10%. So I haven't made it too specific, but it's also attainable as well. So it's not, you know, a massive, huge increase in muscle mass. It's going to be a nice, slow, gradual process. Um, I will have walked a thousand miles by next December. Um, so I signed up for the challenge. I think I posted that on Facebook a couple of days ago. It's a free challenge you can sign up to. Um, you, there is a paid um, option, I think that's 12 99 where you get a medal and a certificate and all the rest of it. But I've just signed up for the free one. Um, so that's just to walk 10, uh, sorry, a thousand miles um, a year uh, for this year. So that equals about 2.7 miles a day. So, you know, that's, that's, that's obtainable. Um, I'm also aiming to keep my visible fat at six or below. Um, so obviously a lot of the stuff from the habit track is going to be coming in onto that. So they're the sort of things that are what we would say an identity-based goal. Um, so has anyone shared any of theirs? Let me have a quick, quick check. Sorry, this iPad's miles away from me. Uh, so Nick wants to do her pre-postnatal fitness course this year. She didn't get it done last year. Excellent. Um, and Claire says um, her goal is seven hours minimum sleep a night for the year. No refined sugar five days a week. Yeah, that's really good. So that's left, uh, let's left, ugh, can't get my words out. Um, that's left you a couple of days a week um, that you can you can treat yourself in moderation, of course. Um, so yeah, completely cutting out um, refined sugar if, if you feel like you do need a little bit of a treat to keep you on track, then that's absolutely fine. 
So Sam says um, she's going to be a fitter, healthier person, more confident, and also a qualified Reiki crystal healer with aromatherapy massage. Excellent. And she's going to be a new me. That's an awesome goal. Well done, Sam. I really like that one. Anyone else? Uh, Nick. Coach Nick has also given up quite, uh, or given quite a lot of chocolate away to the food bank at Bishop Stalford when she said on Wednesday. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so they're the kind of things um, that we're looking at for identity-based goals. So I just wanted to um, go through quickly um, just to remind you of SMART goals. Um, so you've probably all heard this many, many times before, but I thought I'd go through it, give you a bit of a quick reminder in case you're struggling to write their goal, uh, write your goals, sorry, I can't read my words out tonight. Uh, oh, oh, they're all coming in thick and fast. Hold on, I can't keep up. <laughs> By the end of the year, I will be a qualified career life coach starting in October 21 and will have lost at least three stone, increased my fitness and got back to strength training frequently. Um, I will be back in the swing of exercising regularly. Excellent cat, awesome. That is a really good goal, qualified career and life coach. Fantastic to help other people as well. So just going back to SMART goals then, so SMART goals. So um, I'm just going to take a, an example just of, of my yoga training because it's, it's just easy to put into that SMART goal sort of acronym. So a SMART goal must be spe uh, specific. I always have trouble with that word. Specific. <laughs> so specifically, um, I've said that I want to be level three trained in yoga. So that's specific to me and that goal. Then the M stands for measurable. So I need to be able to measure that goal. So... The way I'm going to be measuring that goal is obviously we have various assessments um, through the course. So as I'll be doing the course, I'll be passing those assessments. Then obviously I've got the end exam and assessment. So that's going to measure my success at that goal. Uh, the goal also has to be attainable. Um, so for me, yes, it is attainable. Um, I already have sort of anatomy and physiology knowledge. Um, I already practice yoga, so it sort of stands me in good stead to be able to reach my goal. Um, the goal also has to be realistic. Um, so again, yes, for me, it's realistic. Um, I have an interest, I practice, um, and also I'm, I'm already in the fitness industry, so, industry, so it'd be easier for me. So if, for example, I was gonna go and do an exam on brain surgery, that would not be realistic because I wouldn't have a clue <laughs> and I would feel sorry for the pe person I was operating on. So that for me, it would be unrealistic, but the yoga teacher training is a realistic goal. Um, and then the last letter T is for time bound. So um, I already have an assessment date, which is the 12th of March. Uh, so that is the time that I'm gonna have to, to reach that goal, which is why I said I aim to be a qualified um, yoga instructor by March. So hopefully that will help you if you're having trouble setting any goals or struggling with what to put on your identity-based goals. Just have a quick think of the, the SMART acronym and just make sure that it's specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's realistic for you. And um, also give yourself a time on that. So we've, we've given it a one year, one year time. But obviously we've got the January challenge, which is one month. So um, there's two sort of times there for you. But you also need to consider when you're writing these goals, any barriers to your goal setting. So I think the biggest ones for most of us would be time. Uh, we all have busy lives um, and motivation. So when you're writing the goals, have a think about how you're going to fit your goals into your current lifestyle or whether there's anything that you need to change in your life to be able to to focus on those goals for you because those goals are ultimately for you um, and then hopefully with all the the group support and the support of Jane and all the coaching team as well um, motivation should not be an issue I'm hoping <laughs> well, we'll see but, oh my god there's so many comments hang on hang on hang on guys hang on guys I'm just reading these comments uh... Oh my goodness. So Nick Payne, fat way down, muscle mass up, fit enough mentally physically to run the London Marathon in October. Woo hey, go Nick. Also want to do a course, just need the confidence to do it. You've got the confidence, Nick. Go and put it, put it on your goal. Uh, Mark, to achieve my goals, I need to train more specifically, more often, increase 
my muscle and reduce my fat, which means focus on nutrition as well. Indeed it does. So Jane also wants to qualify for the British Olympic Weightlifting Championships in May and into the European Championships and travel to a competition abroad this year. They are big goals. Awesome, boss. <laughs> I know you'll do it. You'll do it. Uh, Jenny says, uh, water intake two litres. I've really slacked on my water consumption. This will fat all down. Yes, good stuff, Jenny. Evening, Ruth. Hey, Shamila. Hey, Sharish. How are you? <laughs> so many people on, wow. <laughs> Nicola Payne, we talked about the PT course and here to support you with this and all of that. Ah, is that what you want to do, Nick? That'd be awesome. Excellent. You can do it. Of course you can do it. <laughs> I can do it, you can do it, for sure. <laughs> but I think um, what I really want to reiterate is that I need you to remember um, it's a constant path of small wins and that's actually more important than the end goal. Um, so small improvements over time, and that is where this comes in, guys. Habit tracker, oops, folded, sorry. So the habit tracker, so these are all little small wins that you can focus on um, and get them to be a more automatic habit within your life. So um, we've set three different levels. So we've set bronze, which is four uh, things off the habit tracker. Uh, we've set silver, which is six things off the habit tracker, and we've set gold, which is all the things on the habit tracker. Um, and just for me personally, I'm going to be taking the silver option, um, so they will fit into the goals I've just read you, my identity-based goals that I've read you out. So um, for in, order for in order for me to increase my muscle mass by 10%, then obviously my exercise, um, so my Planned exercise is going to be um, more planned. So I already sort of exercise four or five times a week, um, but I don't really progress myself with weights as much as I probably should. So I'm gonna really concentrate on making progression with my weight choices um, when I exercise, especially when I resistance train. Um, and also to increase my muscle mass, I need to make sure that I'm eating the right amount of protein for me. Um, so I've actually upped my protein to two grams um, per, kilo, per kilogram of body weight. So, um, so that should put me in a protein surplus to be able to build muscle. Um, I generally eat about 100 grams of protein a day, but I do need to eat more. So I'm going to really focus on my protein intake. Um, and obviously being a non-meat eater, um, it is a little bit harder. So um, I need to be a bit more creative in the kitchen. Um, and then also to increase my muscle mass, another two things that are really important are sleep. Um, so like some of you already said, um, I'm gonna be trying to get my seven hours sleep a night, which is a lot easier now that I don't have my desk job. Um, and then I need to focus on my water as well. So like Jenny said, I've got a bit slack on my old water intake of late, so I'm gonna sort of up that again to two liters a day. Um, and then obviously I'm gonna, I'm going to set myself a little half a goal. I'm not going to set steps as a goal for myself because I know I can do it. But I've actually scaled up my steps to 12,000 a day this year just to see if I can do it or not. Um, and that will help with obviously the 100 mile, um, walking 100 miles this year um, challenge that I've already set myself. So I'm going to be using uh, six, so I'm, I'm going to be silver. Um, and I will be commenting on the posts that are going out every week. Um, and letting you know um, how I'm getting on with my progress. So any of you, are any of you gonna comment with any video comments? I know Claire Wilshaw, she's really, really good at talking into the camera. So anyone, anyone who's gonna do this for us, gonna video ourselves and we're gonna put it in there. And just think, it's gonna keep you accountable. Um, it's gonna let us see your journey um, and it help you with any motivation that you're gonna need. Um, it will also grow your self-confidence, I promise you. I'm sitting here talking to this camera now, you know, two years ago, I was like, oh my God, no. Um, and you guys see us on camera all the time, so we wanna see you. We wanna see you on the camera. Evening, Kelly. Uh, Sam. Uh, ooh, lots of comments yet. Cool. Lots of help on hand for Nick Payne. Awesome. It's 
So Sam, even though she's going for steel, she's going to try doing them all on the tracker. Yeah, good, good on you, Sam. But don't don't be too hard on yourself. Um, and like Jane said on her live, I will be trying to go dry for January, but I do like a glass of wine at the weekend, so um, I'm going to scowl that one down um, and just concentrate on that. But it's not actually going to be a part of my sort of um, ab fat challenge, as it were. So yeah, so just the important points to remember, um, the journey is more important than the end goal um, and small improvements over time in yourself. So just uh, have a think of it like this. If you, if you improve 1% every day, that's a 300% improvement over the year. And even if that's too much, 1% every week, that's still a 50% improvement over the year. So just think of it like that. So, um, Positivity and positive positive wins will actually compound positively for you. So it'll keep you going, it'll give you give you more motivation. Um, and people often see the end goal as more of a success and not the journey, but you need to actually focus on the systems that you're putting in place to help you achieve that goal. And it's the systems and sticking to those systems that will equal your success. So the end goal actually is is just setting you in the right direction. Um, and then if you think of your goal as being a, a moment in time, so one moment in time is your end goal, but the journey that you get there is gonna be hopefully automatic behavior um, after you've reached your goal, and then that will be a success, and then we can grow those goals into more or achieve more with those goals. Um, so that one moment in time when you achieve your goal um, what happens then? What happens when you've, you've achieved your goal? Do you go back to your old habits? Or have you spent time on that journey to achieving your goal so that old habits become a bit of an unrecognisable behaviour kind of thing, if you see me, if I make sense. <laughs> so Michelle Tyrrell is writing daily positive affirmations for herself um, and that's really helping the soundtrack. Yeah, that's a really good way of doing it. Hey, evening Sonia. Yeah, so writing positive affirmations, even if you stand in front of the mirror and say, I am great. If you say that every morning, you're gonna actually believe that you're great. So just remember that. Um, and then I just wanted to go through quickly um, how to break a habit and how to make a habit. So to break a habit, obviously um, you need to make it invisible. That's the first thing. So the easiest way of doing that is if we're talking about chocolate, you just don't buy it. It's invisible, you can't see it. You want to make it unattractive. So if you are thinking, mm, I could eat a little bit of chocolate, you know, go and read the ingredients on the back. Maybe that'll put you off. So make it unattractive and you'll see exactly the calories in it, the, the crap and the processed stuff that goes into that chocolate. So try and make it as unattractive for yourself as possible. Um, and then make it difficult for yourself. If you still have to have chocolate in the house because your family have it and they don't, have a problem with it and they want to still eat it, then ask your other half to hide it somewhere that you don't know. So you need to make it difficult for yourself to get that chocolate. I'm just using chocolate as an example here. We all love a bit of chocolate. Um, and then you've got to make it unsatisfying as well. So the easiest way to do that is to just think how you will feel after you've eaten that chocolate and it is part of the, part of the goal so your goal is to not eat any chocolate and you've eaten chocolate, how's that gonna make you feel afterwards? It's gonna make you feel not very nice. Um, so you need to make it kind of unsatisfying. So to reverse all that, so that's to break a habit, to make a habit, you need to make it attractive. So you need to make exercise attractive. How can you do that? You could combine it with something that you really like, like good music or um, making the exercise something that you really enjoy, like getting out in nature, obviously for me. Um, and that kind of thing. And if that's not enough, then obviously you can give yourself an extrinsic award, uh, reward. So um, if you've achieved something, you've achieved a goal, you can, I don't know, Jane said she gets in the hot tub. We don't all love a hot tub, but get in a hot bath. Or, you know, treat yourself to, you know, a nice cosy night in front of the TV once you've obviously done all your steps. Um, get rid of the family, have your own time, have some me time. Um, write yourself some affirmations like Michelle. Um, you also need to make it obvious, so 
Uh, I think the best one for that is um, if you're struggling to get the motivation to go to the gym, get that gym stuff ready, put it in a bag, put it by your front door, trip over it before you go out. So that's going to be pretty obvious. Uh, and then you need to make it easy as well. So something that fits in with your lifestyle. So if you're making um, a goal that you want to exercise more, but you've made it a goal to exercise five times a week, is that realistic for your lifestyle? So you've got to ask yourself all of these questions. So at the end of the day, you are what you are repeatedly doing. And hopefully the more that we do them, the more it's going to become an ingrained habit. And then all those good habits become ingrained and automatic to you. And then you change your journey. Um, but just to, just to tap on, it's not all going to be plain sailing, obviously. It's not all going to be easy. You're all going to have moments of disappointment. It's human nature. Uh, let me just, before I go into that, let's have a quick look. <laughs> my tactic that I've, is that tripping over the gym bag Claire I'm assuming <laughs> uh, says needs to concentrate on nutritional week and not ruin it all at weekends yeah just pick some habits off of the um, habit tracker Sass, and just stick to those and once you find those easy then you can add in more um, just concentrate on your protein or just concentrate on um, eating more vegetables or just one thing off the habit tracker to concentrate on your nutrition. Um, maybe you can try the portion control version rather than the macro tracking version in the nutritional booklet which Jane sent out. That might be easier for you. Um, with... Oh Claire, hiding the chocolates, not tripping over the gym bag. <laughs> yeah, gotta hide the chocolates. Gary's just a big chocolate fiend, so I can't see them. Um, but yeah, so just, just to let you know, there are going to be moments of disappointment. There are going to be moments where you're going to be plateauing. Um, so you just really need to sit yourself down, acknowledge how you're feeling, clarify why you're disappointed. So just write down why you're disappointed. Um, and then learn from that disappointment. And then maybe question were your goals actually realistic for you? And if you really think about it and you're like, well, maybe I need to modify my goal, then modify your goal. Modify your goal, scale it down if you need to. Once you've got back on track, you can always scale it back up again. Um, but the most important thing is just to continue with your journey um, and to keep focused on that. So, and then also just ask yourself what support you need. If you do need any support, then obviously we're all here for you. All the members are here for you just post in the facebook group um post your video post that you're struggling then you know you'll get some great comments from everyone everyone is so supportive and we'll all be all be rooting for you so we want to we want to see your video wins and we also want to see if you you're really struggling so you know the first week is going to be great everyone's going to be on track on it going to be doing it and then as we go through january it will get harder, you will get moments of disappointment. You may plateau if one of your goals was an in-body goal. Um, so you, you can't get too disappointed, just acknowledge that feeling. Think about your goal, was it realistic? Modify it if you need to. And then just continue on your journey. That's all we ask you to do. Let's have a quick check. Uh, um, I'm concentrating on January, no alcohol, no sugar, no red meat, and the tracker. And hopefully, after January, no sugar will carry on. Just need to lose fat. Yeah, that's good, Sam. That's a lot of goals to have. So, hopefully, you'll be able to achieve all those. Mark, if everyone puts a tick on their goals on the goals board, if they're done, I'll paint over them because there's no room for new, for new ones. Okay, you can put a tick on mine, Mark. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you can get rid of that one. I'll fill it back up again. Who else is commenting? So, anyone got any comments, any questions? Anyone need any support with anything? Anyone want to put any more goals down that they're focusing on? Let me know, let me know. Are we all ready for this? Are we all motivated? Have we all got our meal planners out if we're doing any nutritional goals? Have we got our 
exercise schedule on track, if we've got our exercise goals, are we planning on embodying tomorrow, if we've got any sort of health, um, visible fat type goals, let me know, let me know. The sand finds no alcohol, no red meat, easy. It's a sugar, that's the main problem. We don't know this the odd day. Yeah, cool. Well done, Sam. So it's all starting from tomorrow. D-Day tomorrow. It's day one of you versus you. Hey, Gula. So just a couple of things that you can ask yourself. Well, if you haven't set your goals yet and you're still thinking about it, just ask yourself, what's the purpose of your goal? Um, and then ask yourself what a successful outcome looks like. Of your goal um, and then maybe just ask yourself why is this my goal so there's a lot of a lot of questions you can ask yourself I've fired a ton of questions at you just so you can get thinking about what's right for you what's realistic and what's relevant for you and your lifestyle at the moment so the actual success at the end of January hopefully is is your new habits becoming more automatic um, and not not essentially the goal that you set so hopefully with all your new habits that are coming in and new healthy habits you're going to achieve your fat loss goals you're going to achieve your any goals that you you have on the health front everything's going to help with visceral fat fat loss body composition um, strength muscle mass everything like that so Ruth says post COVID I'm struggling with getting anything done so mini goal just to get two classes in a week and build up my energy levels. Yeah, great. That's really good. If you're recovering from COVID, Ruth, you need to not push yourself. You need to take it at your own pace. Very, very important. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Well done on your classes in December win. Excellent. Love to see what Debbie's goals are this year. <laughs> Superwoman. So anyone got any questions or comments? Let me know, let me know. Hopefully everyone is all fit and healthy still. I know there's a few people isolating at the moment, which is a bummer. Are you doing your online classes though, everyone that's isolating? I did, I think I did three while I was isolating, which is good for me. Um, I did do my own training as well, but I did three online ad fab classes while I was there, while I was isolating. So Viv, once out of isolation, she'll be back into her routine. Good stuff, Viv. Have you got any new goals, Viv? Are you setting yourself some new goals for January? Let's put them out there. So give me a thumbs up. No, give me a heart. Give me a heart if you're going to post your successes by video. I want to see lots of hearts. Because like I said, you guys are always seeing us, so we want to see you. We want to see you on screen. No hearts. No hearts. Is no one going to video themselves? It's going to make you so accountable. Oh, one heart. We've got a heart. Yes, we have a heart. So Nick's going to book her. Yeah, good. Yeah, all these hearts are coming in now. Woo! Yes, ladies. I am looking so forward to seeing all your faces on video and telling us all about your successes. So Nick's going to book some online classes for the week. Surely, excellent stuff, Nick. Well done. Yes. Lots of hearts. Awesome, guys. Awesome. So I hope this has given you a bit more of a, a kick to get going with those goals if you haven't written them already. Get those habit trackers on the fridge. Pick your level, what you're doing. Have a think about your SMART goals. Have a think about... Um, why they are your goals and what does a successful outcome look like to you. Um, remember, you're going to get moments of disappointment, but that's not going to stop your journey, is it, ladies? Um, you know, acknowledge it, carry on. Um, and then I just want you to remember that, that the journey is the success and the end goal will follow, I promise. Viv Head is still thinking. <laughs> Think away, Viv. You've got a whole evening to think about it. <laughs> so Sam is really happy her new washing machine is coming Tuesday. <laughs> that's good stuff. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's right. Your washing machine uh, broke, didn't it? I remember now. Yeah. 
So before I, I love, love you and leave you ladies, is there anything we need to know before I sign off for the evening? I think I've talked everything I can about goals and hopefully it's been a, a bit useful for you um, in setting your own goals. And remember they're identity based goals, so what you are and what you will be in one year's time. But you need to write them in the present tense. Yeah, lots of hearts still coming through, cool stuff. So we're all watching out for your videos. So there will be um, a post going out on Facebook regularly in the week. So you can post the comments uh, and the videos. Um, I think there's hashtags to go with them as well. I don't have them in front of me at the moment, but they are in um, Jane's email that she sent out to you. So is there a way of searching recipes and printing from either the app or the portal? I think they can PDF from the recipe portal, which Jane sent out. I think you have to have a login for. If Jane's still on, let Sue know that. I think that's the only way of PDF in the recipes is in the specific portal, but I could be wrong. Uh, Sam, great life, Sarah, really encouraging, inspiring. Cool. We are all trying to encourage you to be your best selves, ladies. That's what it's all about. Ah, uh, or maybe Jane can help you, Sue. Um, she's a bit more of a technology expert than me. <laughs> oh, cool. Any more questions? Any more questions? If it's about technology, don't don't ask. <laughs> There we go, Jane says, the portal is searchable and she's just put a link up for you, Sue. So I'm hoping that helps and answers your question. Um, so I think you can PDF from there. I do remember that you can. I think I've got my crunchy granola bar recipe again from there. Um, so let, let us know if that doesn't work for you. Other than that, all the recipes and stuff are on the app. Remember to book your classes for the weeks, guys. Um, we've got not a lot of lewd ladies obviously joining us for January, so you know, make them all feel welcome and they'll soon be part of the big family that we are. Sue says there's no search bar on the portal. Oh, I don't know. Over to Jane, over to Jane for that one. <laughs> so have a good think about your goals. Remember to make them smart. Remember you will have moments of disappointment. Remember to pick your level, bronze, silver or gold. Put your videos in the comments because we do want to see you um, and then there's a few little questions you can ask yourself as well if you're having a bit of trouble with the goals. Other than that I'm going to love you and leave you because I need to go and cook my lettuce leaf for heaters which I'm very much looking forward to um, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the gym next week. I'm so happy I'm back. So I'm back on Tuesday um, for boxing so get yourselves booked on if you need to and have great weeks guys have a really good start to the you versus you um and then we'll keep going with lives obviously through the through the detox time um just to keep you guys on track and motivated so other than that i will say my goodbyes and i will see you all in the gym